Uh, my name is Paul Anderson, uh, nicknamed Dr. T. Ludd. I am a part owner in the Chip Energy Corporation and on the board of directors of the Biomass Energy Foundation. I say that so that for all transparency purposes, et cetera, in case there's any, any doubts about it. I'm a retired uh, professor, taught 30 years, uh, and uh, been retired for about eight years now. Uh, the title is a little bit different from what's in the program, but it is basically uh, the same idea. The future of microgasifier stoves meeting the goals of the Global Alliance for Clean Cook Stoves. So this is what we're going to try uh, uh, to deal with here. Uh, outline of the presentation, the uh, Global Alliance goals, I'll look at those. A little bit of background on microgasification, some of the current realities, emissions efficiencies, et cetera, uh, issues of convenience, fuels, and costs, expectations within reason, these types of things, some major themes that will come in. I will not be giving you the uh, TLUD 101 lecture and explaining all of that. I, how many of you? Do not, could not make a, a, a three-sentence summary of what is top-lit updraft TLUD. Raise your hand. Good. I mean, there's all right, fine. We will be merciful to the rest of you. So we'll just go right on to it. That's excellent. The, uh, first of all, energy issues is a major topic. It's part of the, uh, the important things of life, water, food, health, security, and energy. Energy keeps popping up in the... Uh, in the list of the very, very essentials. Uh, we want sustainable, appropriate, renewable energy, and there are solutions at hand, uh, but they need implementation. So we're looking at the specifics on cook stoves. Uh, part of my stump speech in this political year, uh, you know what a stump speech is, is what you say to everybody every time, that type of thing. There are four essential components of any successful uh, uh, cook stove project. One of them is fuels. You must have a fuel. You might have many fuels, but you must have at least one. You must have a combustion device. Uh, I'm focused on microgasifiers and t -LUDs, but there are other uh, combustion devices. Application is how you use this energy. Think of it as the stove structure, the stove top. It is not this is TLUD combustion technology. Here, it becomes a TLUD stove. Where do you put the, sort of basically, where do you put the pot, all right? Or are you going to be drying fruit? Are you going to be doing other things? This issue of applications. And then the, and I'm separating them very distinctly, separating that from the combustion device itself. Uh, and the human factors, cooking preferences, sizes, social perceptions, costs, and all that. Uh, Biomass Energy Foundation is using the, the, the terms culture and, and uh, is the background for the people and then the acceptance. We do have to get acceptance coming into it. Failure or lacking any one of those four, it's a doorstop. It's done. It's just like your automobile without gasoline. It's not going to take you anywhere, okay? So the, uh, uh, those are all those different factors that go along in with it. The Global Alliance goals, they want 100 million stoves by 2020, 10 years are gone. We'll give you the benefit of the doubt for uh, 10 million stoves. That's 90 million in 90 years. That's only, uh, okay. All right. Um, I'm proposing equal thirds, 30 million, okay. One of those is for the stickwood stove, standard combustion, leadership by rockets. The second grouping is microgasifier stoves, and it is a, uh, the combustion of gases. We're going to be talking about that. And then all other technologies for making heat, solar, biogas, electricity, LPG, alcohol, charcoal, they get a chunk of it. So am I laying claim to 30 million? Am I taking on the, that challenge? Actually. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't want to get greedy and say I was going to do half, not me, but that the t -Luds were going to do half, because we're only expecting a third of the financial resources to be equally shared, but that's beside the point, okay? Something needs, would come in for some help with that. But yes, we are very serious about having this accomplish uh, these tasks. Of course, 
the other 30 millions, they got a lot of work to do too. There's enough out here for everybody to be involved with. A comparison of stoves. I'll compare them on major classes of fuel, on the efficiencies of biomass stoves, the emissions of CO and PM, and variety of, of uh, acceptable fuels. The uh, first one, on major classes of fuels, the top of the list are the most expensive and uh, the cleanest, and the bottom of the list tend to be the uh, uh, least uh, clean, the least costly, and so we, we're looking at in those lists in there. In this listing into here, note that the ones at the top are, uh, there's not, they're not based on combustion. And then we have the second group, the gases and liquids and things, are from fossil fuels, and the fossil fuels are uh, non-renewable, they're carbon positive, and, and so there's issues of that. Gases of the stove biomass, charcoal, there's wasteful production on it, stick wood burning, the traditional uh, more solid uh, uh, stick aspects. The top ones in here, I'm looking at them as being too expensive, they're non-renewable. The ones below the line, higher emissions and lower efficiencies into them. But in the center, gases from biomass. Biogas is a well-known term. It's rotting manure and everything like that. It's being an anaerobic digestion. It is giving you a, um, a very clean gas that can, I mean, that can be burned very, very cleanly. And, it, and they took the name biogas. When you take some solid, some wood, and you're going to pyrolyze it and you're getting gas from it, it is technically biogas, but you can't use that term. It would be too much confusion. So we re use the term wood gas or pyrogas, or these types of things like that. Now, the key element in here for its cleanliness is they are gases being burned. The reason that these microgasifiers are cleaner burning stoves is that the air, the oxygen that is coming in for doing the combustion only has contact and mixes with gases. It is not out there mixing with, um, in with the wood and the other, other fuels and things like that. Gasifiers separate the creation of the gases from where those gases are being combusted. That separation might be a matter of a few centimeters. It might be a matter of a second or milliseconds in there. However, it is separate, and so the, that is, it, it, it greatly facilitates the, the mixing and the turbulence and stuff so that you can get a clean, uh, uh, the clean burning into there. So I've distinguished it as a category into here. Okay. Background on gasifier stoves, 1985, Tom Reed, 1990s, Paul Wendelbow. Wendelbow uh, did 5,000 stoves in Uganda, but unfortunately, he contracted a very serious case of malaria in his 70s. Uh, just as he was turning 70, he was medevaced out. The treatment was rough on him. Wendelbow reappears in 2007-2008 and uh, justifiably has received his recognition for his pioneer work. But disease took its toll because what he was on to was, was the right track into there. I'd also like to recognize uh, Ron Larson, who worked with Tom Reed in the 1990s, and Ron was very much involved always with charcoal, those issues of these stoves can make charcoal, and also the issue of ceramic containers and things like that, which were part of his uh, things. In the year 2005, we had prototypes and toys for boys, okay? Uh, mostly there were guys that were dealing with this stuff, and we really didn't have a lot of activity. I got started in 2001, so I've crested my 10th anniversary on this stuff, all right? The uh, uh, 2005 is the year when we had the champion stove and the first Cat P Award and all that stories. 2005 to 9, the British Petroleum did the Urja stove with a fan, around 400,000 legitimate TLUD stoves. It's a commercial entity, the information source. We don't get much information from them, unfortunately. I wish that they would, would have shared it, and I'm not too sure even what they are currently, uh, uh, currently doing in there. 
The, uh, at present, there are a few projects, but we're not at yet 1 million T-LUD stoves. The uh, uh, project led by Karsten Bechtel in Uganda is for in the five to 10,000 stove bracket. Wendelbo has proposed something in Zambia for 150,000 uh, T-LUD stoves, and he has a fuels focus, et cetera. But there are no big numbers. We don't have lots of, of uh, uh, big projects that we can go out and point to. 